right, today we're going to be learning how to set up a DIY worm bin. And I've got various things here in front of me. This is shredded cardboard, very little bit of newspaper, and a little bit of my mailings that I've shredded, but mostly shredded cardboard. We've got some leftover compost from this bin that was previously used. And it's actually a little bit more than usual, but you can use regular compost, you can use vermi compost, or you can just use a handful of garden soil if you want, but that's to inoculate your bedding, which is what this is, for your worm bin for your worms. And this right here is just a Rubbermaid bin. And it's about 14 inches by about eight inches or so, and about, you know, this far deep, that's maybe eight inches or so deep. And I'm only gonna fill it to about right here, right here, which is probably, I don't know, five inches. So let's get started. Now you see in here, there's some screen and some holes, uh, some air vent holes, and then some duct tape putting that in. I made this bin originally at a Burma composting class at my county extension office. And they put in some pretty big holes. I don't think you need them that big. You could put a lot more little ones would be fine, but these also worked out fine. And I know this bin is going to work because we just harvested about four pounds of castings out of here. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is add some rainwater to this, and it's been soaking for about two hours or so. As I squeeze it, you may get a drop or two, but really not much of anything feels like a sponge that maybe has been wrung out and then placed on the kitchen sink. So we're going to add a bunch of this. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to add a handful of this compost from our last time we did this. Again, you can use garden soil, you can use compost. Vermicompost is preferred, but any of them will do. You're just trying to get some microbes in here. So let's continue putting more in. And what I found when it comes to moisture, if you're not sure, probably a little bit safer to go on the less moist side. You certainly don't want it to be anywhere near dry, but you do not want, like if I go to the bottom, you do not want something like that, okay? You want it wrung out pretty good. Because I had some extra left over, I'm just going to add more. Really, all you need is one hand fill, especially for a uh, bin like this. But I'm going to add the rest of this so that it can continue to get broken down. Now, usually you're not going to have that much left over in a bin. I just got impatient and I wanted to count my worms. This bin was originally started with about 50 to 100, and we ended up uh, letting it reproduce, and it got up to almost 500. I think the final count was 470, or I'm sorry, 491. I could have let it go for another month to get more castings, but I didn't. So now we have some bedding and some mixed up previous compost, and we'll put just a little bit more, make sure it's wrung out. And what you'll find is as the worms you know, a month or two from now, as they start to really get into this bedding and eat it down, this level is going to decrease. And as I vermicompost, as I feed, I add a little bit more bedding every time. And then right here is the worms that we took out of this bin previously, all 479 of them. And we are going to release them after I do a feeding with this. So let's get to that. All right, now that we have our bedding in, and it's inoculated, we're ready to set up a feeding zone. Since this is the very beginning of the bin and your worms most likely have been in transit or maybe have had a um, experience that they didn't like too much, like getting sorted out and counted <laughs> individually by me, it's best to start with very little food. So I'm just gonna make a little area here in the center and we will lay down some food for them. And what I brought is just some food that was previously frozen, lettuce, strawberry top, some banana peels, piece of papaya, but I'm not going to put all that in here. So we'll put this piece of lettuce and this, although it looks big, is just a stalk of lettuce that's been cut and it is mostly air and that was previously frozen. And we'll put just these two strawberry tops. And I think actually that's all I'm going to put in there for this initial feeding. And this is not a lot for 500 worms. This is, although again, it looks the most bulkiest, it is full of water. So is this little piece of lettuce and same with the strawberry tops. The other things that we like to put on there is coffee grounds. Coffee grounds and tea grounds that have been spent and used and now are, you know, would normally be discarded, but we're gonna use them to help feed the worms. And they are a very small ground up 
fine piece of food for them to eat. So I'm gonna try and just get the coffee grounds in. And again, brand new bin, not a whole lot of coffee grounds. Okay, and then the final thing that we're gonna put on top of this feeding is grit. Worms have gizzards in that, to aid in their digestion. So all this is is pulverized eggshells. In the wild, they use sand or any other hard particle that they can get a hold of, but we're gonna use some eggshells that have been pulverized in a mini blender. This also helps to balance any kind of acidity in the bin. And that right there constitutes the first feeding of this bin. So I'm gonna bury the feeding. Now normally there's worms in here. There are not any worms in here now. And I would check on this in one week. If you check on it in one week and there's still some food left, then feed them a little bit less. You can give them more food that time since you've already disturbed them, but give them less than you did before. You also wanna test the moisture and make sure it still feels like a wet running out sponge. All right, so here are the worms. We counted these out from the previous time we used this bin. We are going to do a time lapse with these. So here we go. All right, it looks like most of them have squirmed in there. So what I'm gonna do is just add just a little bit more of this bedding right on top, kind of cover them up. And we're gonna cover them with newspaper. Nothing significant about the newspaper, just uh, for me, it's just a, a top covering, help keep the moisture in there. This bin does have a lid and on top of the lid, are some holes and that duct tape and the screen that are covering all the holes so the worms can't get out. But that will about do it for this. Again, not real hard to start a worm bin. Shredded cardboard soaked in rainwater, a very little bit of food, a handful of vermicompost or regular compost or garden soil. And I like to put coffee and a little bit of pulverized eggshells for grit, but that will do it. That is a very simple DIY worm bin. Now, of course you need to get the worms. You can get them from somebody that you know. You can get them by purchasing them from somebody locally. That's probably the best. Or there's plenty of companies on the internet where you can buy them from. And worst case scenario, you can go buy a bunch of fishing bait worms because those are almost 100% likely to be composting worms. These are red wigglers that are in here. So I hope that helps you get started vermicomposting because it is such a fun hobby and it gives you fantastic natural fertilizer and soil amendments for your garden. And it helps you take nutrients from somewhere else and add them to your garden with all the food scraps that you put in there. Also helps you get rid of waste and prevent it from going to the landfill. So again, I hope this helps you out and happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.